Welcome back. Business News Editor Bosun Omofaye joins me. A good morning to you, Bosun. Interesting uh, times in interesting. in the oil industry. In the, the latest deal sector. now. Yes. So what's really going on? It looks like a big game. Mm. Uh, well, I a wish game changer, I, if you like I to call it. I, I, wish I'm, I'm, I wish I'm part of it because it looks like everybody's making money. Hmm. Uh, 265, almost $270 million is a lot of money on the table, even with the current exchange rate, even with the dollar position globally. So hmm. this 40 oil uh energy deal is quite uh, interesting but, but let's let, let's uh, show a few things uh on the screen then we will uh, uh talk about uh, uh it a little bit further what's been going on what's the news that we got in this morning we all went for the uh muslim holiday and and, and out of that holiday approach in nigeria the online economic and markets platform uh i came up this morning with this uh, breaking news as you'd want to put it one of nigeria's largest indigenous oil trader but of course that in terms of market cap 40 oil is actually number one we'll take we'll show you the ratio a little bit on nse listed on the stock exchange 40 oil uh, reportedly sells uh 17 percent of his equity to mercuria energy group of switzerland they will talk about mercuria in about a minute but this is quite the uh juicy part of it the deal has been approved by the securities and exchange commission and the Nigerian Stock Exchange, and this is worth about $265 million. This is the biggest we've seen in this market in 2015. Let's put that on record for everyone. It's been a very brutal year for the Nigerian market. The market index is down about 12% now year to date, thanks to recent slight recovery. So, Forte Oil bringing this deal onto the table is a game changer, as Harris put it earlier on, in the Nigeria's limited space where indigenous oil firms are marginal players when the recent years we've seen a ramp up of this not just in photo oil um Orlando consummated a similar deal with a Canadian oil firm a few years ago so the Nigeria's oil and gas space has been expanded as we get more indigenous oil firms are uh, engaging in the deep end of the global oil market space and this will be a game changer not just for photo oil for, for the entire market as it were this is going to rub off positively on the rest of the market and this is also good news that indigenous oil firms are getting on in the game but let's talk a little bit about mercury here before we show you the ratios for photo oil the company that is making this pile of money at this time of course they spend months and months discussing this getting regulatory approval across board and and this has come a long way in coming so this is not an overnight deal this was a deal that was as months perhaps a year or more in the works and now it's all out uh, in the open now what how much we do we know about mercuria mercuria energy group is a company reporting about 112 billion us dollars in revenue for 2013 that's quite a lot of money It's the world's third largest a commodity trading company and an asset operator with offices in 15 uh, countries around the world. 15 offices, 50 offices, I beg your pardon, 5-0 well, offices was where uh, Mercuria Energy Group of uh, Switzerland operates around the world. This is a global energy company uh, doing business in crude oil, refined petrol products, natural gas, including LNG, uh, power, coal, biodiesel, carbon emission. So this is an integrated energy, international energy company. And that's the one that Forte Oil is now going into bed with, or has gone into bed with. We got also industry sources saying cash has been paid for this equity. But let's uh, 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 sweeten this for you a little bit. Let's take an eye on, on Forte Oil, and this is what you call the comeback kid. And that's Femi Otedola, one of Nigeria's multi-billionaires, a close associate of Aliko Dangote there, one doing cement, the other doing oil. But of course, uh, Aliko is also looking at petrochemicals. Now, so this is the, the game changer. These are the two guys in Nigeria you should watch. But watch Femi Otedola right now. He is richer. And this is the story. Look at 40 oil. Market cap, 312.6 billion. Shaving off 8 billion. That was what the total market value of 40 oil was just a few years ago. Now it's worth triple digits. So what happened? How did this wonder kid called Femi Otedola, well, it's not a kid by well, just figure mm -hmm. of speech, but this wonder company, how did it come from the backwaters of British Petroleum, the uh, privatization of uh, into African Petroleum in 2001, 
about some years down the line, now is one of the big companies on our market. Total assets, almost $120 billion. Uh, gross revenue reported for 2014 was 61.1 billion naira. Share price around 240. That was where the market went off for the Muslim holiday on on uh, Wednesday. Yes. Now the market cap you seen at the bottom there is where the value really is. That is 17% equity of the outstanding shares of 40 or the Mercuria Energy Group of Switzerland has picked up, and that is worth 53.1 billion. Naira. Now that is a lot of money and those data we got from 40 Oil early today. Now we're getting further market information surrounding this uh, deal that actually 40 Oil intended to sell 20% or uh, 25% I beg your pardon to Mercuria but eventually sold 17% uh, uh, more sale could come as 40 Oil Femi Otedola, who is a major shareholder, tried to divest, divest his shareholdings and give it to the marketplace and give it to those who know the business of not just importing diesel, which has been 40 oil's backbone. Now, from importing fuel, the days of subsidy may just well be over, and the president, uh, Buhari, is closing the door on uh, imported, refining products. So get wise, guys, and, and looks like 40 Oil is ahead of the game. Now, Mercurial Energy will get two seats. That's what we are, with market sources told us. We've got two seats on the board of 40 Oil. That brings a lot more international thinking, insight, context into the business of 40 Oil. So perhaps from next AGM, annual general meeting of 40 Oil, you'll find perhaps two new faces at the annual shareholders meeting. No Nigerians, those faces will likely be. Then the payment to be made to FO and Otero that gets richer. I don't know the size of his own share of that 53 billion, but if you sold uh, to $65 million, you'll get home with some. Uh, we'll be smiling to the banks. Uh, and of course, the stock exchange and the NSC uh, also will share some handsome fees in that you don't do those transactions without the regulatory authorities sharing part. And of course, part of that will end up in the kitty of the CEO himself. The federal government will make some of that money. So it's, it's, a, it's a lot of sweetness all around. And I just told Arit, if I wish I am part of that, uh, fortunately, I'm earning my money here. Yes, yes, we are. And then, you know, that sweetness could actually give you a bad tooth. But looking at how this is going to play out for the Nigerian Stock Exchange, we're expecting the investors to begin to favor this equity in the next couple of trading sessions. In the I last suspect, analysis of the, of the market, I actually I suspect, saw that. Harriet, that some guys had a heads up on this deal and the shares. You know, I said yesterday, and I was just having this look, something is happening in 40 Oil. I couldn't exactly place my fingers on it, but now it's out in the open. And thanks to ProShare and the rest of them are breaking this news. And they chose the holiday to break it. Mm -hmm. no, no, no better time than now. So when you come back to the market, you know where you're going. When you come back on Monday, you hear that some folks, 40 Oil is richer by 257, uh, sorry, 265.7. Which also means that at the dollars. end of the day, their earnings are going to improve, which also means uh, improved dividends to shareholders. So shareholders <laughs> at this time are also tightening the belt to get a little bit of this booty. I think the bigger story is for the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And mm. I think that is where the big story is. And I think we've seen a bit of transformation. Um, well, I'm going to go back to Aliko, and, and sorry for that, if I'm trying to do a bit of a PR here. Moving from importing cement and rice and whatever, into the petrochemical cement production, not just in Nigeria and across Africa. Then you find um, uh, Owando, which was purely just doing retail palm station yeah, years ago, now getting yeah. into the energy resources, getting into the bigger business of oil and gas around the world. You have a, a number of others, Seplet, also an indigenous company, coming from being a private uh, energy company into a PLC. Now, a few weeks ago, just about two, three weeks ago, Sahara Energy, which is another private energy company, says it's ready to do $1.2 billion listing, an IPO in London and in Lagos, and raise about another $800 uh, uh, million uh, dollars, uh, in debt from international marketplace. Sahara Energy would also get listed, about, I think, on the London and Lagos Stock Exchange. Now you have 40 oil also increasing in stake. So, and this is good news that, look, we can get it done. The space is getting better. And that Nigeria indigenous oil firms will get into the bigger oil game and we can put our money where our mouth is and our mouth where our money is. It's no longer the days when the entire Nigeria's oil industry, our own participation is just about 1% or less. Now we can compete 
from not just onshore to offshore, sure. and we can also get part of the global business of oil and gas, including the energy, which includes power, coal, diesel, uh, again, with the carbon issues and the greenhouse issue and uh, better energy uh, 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 production around the world and supply. This is a game changer, and I think we should commend all those who are part of this. But again, we must commend the government, and, and this is it, because if the government hasn't really change its own policy focus, including body language, uh, all of this wouldn't be, be, be happening. And I think it is, perhaps this is one of the things that from the Jonathan's administration to the current one, it looks like look, the days of subsidy is over. And those who are in the oil industry are beginning to see that. And I wasn't surprised as Sahara Energy quickly ran to the market and said, look, we're doing an IPO and we're doing a bond raising. And now 40 oil is moving also as 17% is quite significant. And perhaps if they go ahead as much as 25%, perhaps you're looking at 40 oil getting a lot bigger than you thought. From 8 billion market cap to 312, that's quite significant. That's about, uh, if you go by this, that's more than 3,780% in terms of market cap jump for 40 oil. And that is really good news. Mm. What, what's, what's, what's also good news is the fact that the, the economy can begin to look at the fact that it's having a widening space with regards of oil, all these oil companies coming in and playing in the bigger picture in the global oil sector. And um, it also makes me wonder, how are they really going to, you know, play, especially since we're seeing oil prices fluctuating rather crazily. Oil prices are still below $50 a barrel. Uh, market analysts are projecting it to go down to as low as $40 a barrel. How, how, how do you think it's going to affect their business? Uh, no matter how low price, uh, how deep or steep you see the air caught in oil prices, it is not going to be at the price of, of pure water. Uh, so, uh, whether we like it or not... Well, some have actually speculated it could go down to as much as $20 a barrel. Well, there are all the, there are all the forecasts that we're looking at. 2020, they're about when you go back to $80 a barrel. If you're in the oil business, you take a long-term view of it. If I have an oil license, I'm not going to sell it because oil has gone down to $10 a barrel. Because of $3 a barrel, I'm still going to hold on to my license. Mm. Because this is one form of energy element that the world needs that powers the whole, the entire world. And if you have part of that game, at whatever price that product is selling, you hold on to it. It's like you have a gold field or you have a field of diamonds in which you, you extract in diamonds or you extract in copper or silver. These are key mineral resources, natural resources that go into this kind of thing you're using. Okay, uh, because you have to use that. You use them in, in cars, in different in automobiles, in household equipment, in flooring, and what have you. So the natural resource is where the world really is. But again, if you look at the price of oil, this is a market or an industry that we've been shot out of it due to a, a number of issues, and I wouldn't want to list them here, uh, over the last 10, 20, 40 years as, as a country. So it's also good that we're beginning to have the oil companies, our own indigenous guys, getting into this game. You look at the banking sector, for example. 15, 20, 30 years ago, no Nigerian bank would be able to lend money to any power energy company uh, in Nigeria or anywhere in the world. Now we're getting into that business. Our insurance firms are also getting a lot bigger. And you find a lot of international insurance firms from South Africa, from Europe, getting into our Nigeria's insurance industry. Now you find the oil and gas guys also getting in there, and we are also going out. You find in the cement manufacturing, which is one part of our industrial manufacturing uh, sector, also getting across our borders. Now, this should provide an impetus for the government and our policymakers to draw up more action plans and policies that will help other sectors of the economy to shape up and be part of the global space. Uh, until we do this, we will not really be able to do the diversification we're talking about. Now, if we have a, a board of directors comprising just everybody is local. Now we have going global in terms of in terms of that. That means that all the operations of Mercuria, if we go back to the 40 oil story deal, they will be keeping an eye on Nigeria. That doesn't mean they haven't been doing businesses with Nigeria, but that also means that 40 oil will be part of this from Switzerland, where the HQ of Mercuria is as a major equity partner. That means that we're beginning to be part of the global economic marketplace and decision making. We're not just some backwater guys who just sit here in Lagos and we think we're making money. So I think this is good. Uh, Femi Otedola is at the center of it. Uh, I think he's, uh, which is the local balance, is born again. Let me use that expression. Knowing fully well that the days of just importing diesel and petrol 
the doors gradually closing. Perhaps the current administration will shut that window permanently and nail it and make sure it doesn't get open anymore so that Nigeria begins to produce locally, and this is good, and say, look, everybody in this business, get wise, get bigger, bring up the game that will change things for Nigeria and for Nigerians, and I think that's where the biggest story is. Well, thank you so much, Bosun, for your perspectives. Uh, game thank changer, you. definitely, in the <laughs> oil industry. We're going to keep our eye on that, and I've got you to keep that eye on it for me. I need, I need, I need that energy. <laughs>